final score, Wrexham 5, Swindon 5. <laughs> I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC, and I'm supposed to try and explain all this stuff, but why do they keep doing this to me? How do I explain the inexplicable? Uh, I'll give it a shot, I guess. But anyway, uh, just to put a bit of context onto this, uh, looking at data going back over thousands upon thousands of matches, the chances of a game ending 5-5 is 0.0098%. So that was a bit of a special one, I think it's fair to say. Wrexham should be delighted at how we can fight back, which is wonderful. They should be delighted at the fact that we clearly are able to score goals in big numbers without Paul Mullen. <laughs> but we were all worried about replacing Paul Mullen. We are letting in too many goals, conceding five goals in our in two of our first three home league matches, that's an issue. So, incredible games, incredible spirit, incredible entertainment, but going forwards, we're going to have to fix this. And I suspect Parkinson did. He did last season after that 7-5 against Barnet. But it'll be interesting to see what he does. Anyway, Wrexham just made the two changes from the side that won in midweek. Andy Cannon coming in uh, to hold the midfield ahead of Luke Young is uh, meant that a midfield trio of Cannon, Lee and Jones were used. And Wrexham started off positively. I was pretty happy with the first 15 minutes. Uh, you can see Swindon, who are known as a possession-based team, were going to try and move it around in our half and keep us away from possession, and they did it pretty well as well. They, you could see their quality from the start. But it was Wrexham who were forcing chances and saves. In five minutes, a long ball over the top by Foster, really quick thinking by him. Bickerstaff trying to race through. Bruitt, the last defender, seemed to have some hold on him. I don't know if it was enough to give a foul, to be fair. And also, I mean, the rules say that a professional foul, the player's got to be in control of the ball, and the ball was going to bounce through to the keeper. Anyway, the ref didn't see it as a foul, although Bickerstaff went down and asked a question, and play continued. But a few minutes later, Bickerstaff again involved. Great piece of play by him down the left channel. Bruitt having a real scrap with Bickerstaff. Wasn't strong enough. Bickerstaff got goal signed of him, held him off, lashed an excellent finish across the keeper inside the right post. Tremendous save by Maloney, who would be very, very busy in this match. Just pushed the ball clear. And Walsall, having been rescued by the keeper, took advantage in the 17th minute. Although it's got to be said, the first of a few sloppy goals that Wrexham would concede. Bickerstaff lost it on the edge of the area. The ball worked wide, was swept across... The face of goal, Austin nodded back into the danger area. And Jake Young was able to head the ball home, simply unmarked, from six yards out. When the cross comes in for Austin, Tozer has picked up Young. He has a decision to make. He decides he's going to step off and go onto the goal line to make less of the goal smaller, in essence. Make it harder for someone to put the ball past Foster. Um, I think with hindsight, he probably wishes that he'd stayed with Young as Austin on the stretch. He did ever so well to keep the ball alive, but all he could do was pop it back into the six-yard box. And if he did that and turned it into a 50-50 between Toza and Young in the air, I reckon you're back Toza to win that one. Wrexham tried to strike back. Palmer sweeping the ball, corner in towards the penalty spot. Palmer, uh, sorry, Lee sweeping it in. Palmer getting up really well. Powerful header. Keeper again made a good save, tipping it over. The Palmer then asked why it wasn't a penalty because you could see clearly from the stands that his shirt was being held. Uh, his, his midriff was completely bare as, the, as his shirt was rolled up his body. But... The referee wasn't interested. And two minutes later, Wrexham found themselves two goals down. This time, Mendy on the left-hand side, challenged by McEachran. Was he fouled? M maybe. Was he, he, there, was, there was a push on his back, and we've seen them given, not least at Mubledon in the our penalty area. But having said that, should he have been stronger anyway? I don't know. Anyway, Kemp emerged with the ball, went down the right, cut inside, Delivered a lovely little dinked assist, and Austin was switched on 
<laughs> just Premier League quality run ran round the back of the back three, but made sure he stayed on size and just intercepted it as it looked like it was going through to Foster. Really, really sharp finish there. O'Connell had come in one to try and pick players up and then found himself having to handle Austin when he went back outside again and maybe will feel as he should have stayed goal side of Austin and stopped him from getting back in there. So 2-0 after 27 minutes, but three minutes later, Wrexham roared back in fabulous style. Jake Bickerstaff scoring his second goal of the week. Great stuff there. So he combined with Boyle down the left. He was by the corner flag, and he managed to nutmeg Hutton and somehow just drive through Blake Tracy to get himself into the penalty area where from a tight angle he finished really well slamming it with power Maloney didn't stand up well enough and Wrexham pulled back into it the noise was terrific and you started to think right okay we're in this now but 101 seconds later Walsall were two ahead again this time Lee losing the ball in midfield and lunging to foul his man, but the ref played a good advantage. The ball came out to Young on the right side of the box. He held it up, squared it to Kemp, and he whipped a good ball shot from the edge of the D inside the right post, bottom corner. It was a super finish. I don't think Foster had a chance with it, to be honest with you. There were two players between him and Kemp. Maybe Cannon, with that insurance, should have stepped out and actually tried to, to challenge Kemp. But instead, he looked look to stand his ground and maybe look to get a block in. And Kemp ripped it into the bottom corner beautifully. Credit to Wrexham. We fought back again. Bickerstaff. On the turn, hitting a shot in the middle of a scramble from a Ben Toza throw-in, but the shot was blocked. There were lots of bodies in there. It resulted in another throw. Toza hurled it in again, and this time Boyle, attacking it about eight yards out, made good contact, but put it wide to the left post. A really presentable chance. But, once again, just so it looked like Wrexham were roaring back, Swindon struck again, and again it was a, a really frustrating goal to concede. Blake Tracy feeding the ball through to McEachran, running in towards goal. Toza stepped out. I think he had to because, you know, this was an extremely dangerous situation. And McEachran's first touch wasn't the best. I think Toza sniffed a chance to get a challenge in. He did get the challenge in, but it ricocheted off McEachran and dropped in behind him. Boyle had been covering Toza but then, and, and the movement of Young, but then seemed to decide that he's better watch out for McEachran instead stepped aside and I allowed Young lots of space and he drove into the channel and had a simple finish. Barnett had given the ball away initially. Really sloppy goals at Wrexham were conceding, getting punished when they lost the ball in poor parts of the pitch. Still, Wrexham kept coming. Barnett sweeping a good cross in for Palmer who laid it off and Lee, 25 yards out, hit a terrific strike but it was just wide of the left-hand post. Then Barnett did well again, charging down the right, beat two men, whipped a terrific cross in and a fabulous header by Godwin Alife to dive in and deny Palmer as he was looking to lunge and head the ball home. In added time, the pressure continued. Toes are throwing, throwing a, a long throw. Boyle flicking it on nicely. Lee attacking it at the far post, but the ball hit a defender and deflected behind from the corner. That corner caught one of the many strong gusts of wind in the match and swerved towards goal and the keeper Maloney had to desperately get across and just palm it off the line as it was about to cross it. The ref did give a foul but I've looked at it a few times I really can't see any foul certainly not on the keeper unless the keeper the referee just thought that goalkeeper is flapping at it someone must have impeded him but there was no one ever near him but yeah frustratingly for Wrexham the foul was given, didn't go in anyway. And in the fifth minute of added time at the end of the first half, Pickerstaff doing ever so well. 50-50 between him and Godwin Alife. He did well to flick it past him as Godwin Alife's high boot was round his midriff and he drove a powerful half volley from the edge of the D but put it just wide of the left post. So Wrexham certainly creating chances but 4-1 down at the break. The Wrexham team that came out in the second half was unrecognisable from the first. Absolutely on the front foot hammering at the door to try and get themselves back into the game. It was incessant pressure from the 47th minute until the 51st when we got a goal back. Firstly, Tozer again hurling in a long throw-in. It's flicked on, and the goalkeeper just managed to beat James Jones to it. A minute later, Cannon, breaking forwards, did well to win it. 
fed in towards the edge of the area, towards Palmer. Palmer, I think, actually miscontrolled it and it just rolled through, but Cannon was very alert, sprinted on, and was in loads of space in the left channel, drove in a shot. It wasn't the best. The keeper spilled it, though, and, it, and in the end, it had to be slashed clear that Swansea, uh, Swansea, Swindon suddenly panicking because Godwin Elise hacked it out of the goalkeeper's hands when he looked to be grabbing the loose ball and it was hoofed into the stand. From that throw-in, Tozer again going long, swinging it in. Boyle, great chance in the six-yard box, but he heads it downwards and that allows the keeper to make an awkward save, the ball bouncing in front of him and spinning back up. He didn't hold it at the first attempt, pushed it up in the air, but managed to grab it as it came back down again. So close in though, Boyle, you know, I know, you know, you get taught when you're trying to score a goal with a header, head it downwards. Yeah, but probably not at that range. When you're that close in, just put it on target. You're so close in, go for the shortest distance. But Boyle in heading it downwards, I think basically missed a chance. Maxim continuing to push on. Palmer with a great spin, beating two men in the process, driving in a shot, which the keeper can only push behind the goal. Very similar, that shot from a tight angle and the way he beat two men to Bickerstaff's goal, in fact. And then from that corner, Wrexham finally get some luck. Lee sweeping a corner beyond the far post, looking to use that corner we like to play, where someone backpedals out beyond the far post and puts it back in. Palmer was the target, but Palmer is grabbed hold of. He goes down. We've not been given quite a few of those. It is a penalty, though, and the ref agrees, gives it. Lee steps up and smashes it down the middle, and it's 4-2. The pressure continues and continues, and it becomes 4-3 with a, a wonderful goal. I mean, I've got to say that for me, this is going to be a contender for goal this season. 14 pass move. It took 37 seconds. It was lovely, the probing and the way we tried to work through their team. Um, only Mendy and Bickerstaff didn't touch the ball in the move, and it ends with Jones driving through the middle, playing a lovely little ball around the corner to Lee. A beautiful first-time layoff by Lee sends Jones one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Maloney does the right thing and rushes out quickly, and Jones dinks him delicately, the ball soaring over him, and wrecks him right back in it. And as Phil Parkinson said to us after the game, that was probably the point where, well, certainly we should have won it, I thought we were going to win at that point, so did he. Um, but we just lost a bit of intensity. Not that, you know, you can blame the players. They just poured everything into an 11-minute session after half-time, which had pulled them back in the game. And he said that just like with the Dover game, which is very similar to this, you know, we hauled our way back, but then took a bit of a breather. And this allowed Swindon to come back into it. Uh, Blake Tracy with a terrific surge, feeding Young, who drove it across Foster, but just wide of the far post there was then a huge minute in the 61st minute a few moments rather beg your pardon a great turn by Barnett beating the left back who'd just been brought on Ward he pulled an inviting ball across the face of goal the keeper missed it Palmer had an open goal but a combination of him and Godwin Alife somehow managed to squeeze it wide from inside the penalty area in the far post a massive massive moment and there could have been another massive moment two minutes later, a bizarre one as well. Austin winning the ball in the halfway, and it looked like a handball. Ref didn't give it. It fell harmlessly to Toza, or so it seemed, but he really pinged a back pass to where he thought Foster was. He assumed Foster had taken a sort of orthodox goalkeeper position, you know, between him and the goal. But Foster was actually lurking by the penalty spot to give himself more angles for the pass. So he had no chance of getting to it, and Toza's back pass hit the outside of the post, and luckily for Wrexham, and went behind for a rather bizarre corner. Halfway through the second half, Wrexham starting to pick it up again, Boyle feeding Mendy, who drove down the left, and it's a cross-slash shot, which was palmed away well by Maloney. Within a minute, another bit of pressure brings three shots. First, Bickerstaff drilling it from inside the box. It's blocked. It falls to Palmer, who hits it on the turn. That's blocked. And ricochets outside the box for Cannon, who drives in a shot, which is on target and is defe deflected. The keeper beaten by deflection, but again, it rolled about a foot wide of the post. So at that point, it looked like Rex would get the momentum going. But, and I think this is why our comeback was so remarkable, Swindon started to regain their composure. Like I said, they're a passing team. They moved the ball around really well. And in the second half, they weren't doing that at all. When their defence was exposed, their defence looked quite vulnerable. 
they managed to refine their principles and start to move the ball about as well. They brought on some midfield substitutions as well to freshen things up, and it worked. They began to squeeze the life out of the game. They were controlling possession. Suddenly, we weren't getting at them. We were chasing the ball. The pace of the game went down. There were stoppages, which naturally Swindon took advantage of, and... Wrexham were finding themselves being frustrated and Swindon were starting to be constructive again. A Wrexham corner resulted in a breakaway, Austin feeding it forwards and Kemp running at the last defender, Barnett, cut onto his right foot and it's a tremendous dipping shot from the edge of the area which at the bottom of the barn bounced down and out again. Wrexham's so fortunate to survive that. Within the minute, <laughs> well first, Lee... Played on ball over the top and Bickerstaff chasing after it was only beaten to it because Maloney was very quick out of his box. He was about 25 yards out when he managed to thump it into the stand and beat Bickerstaff to it. And immediately from the restart, Walsall, uh, I've got another goal. So this time, Lee on the right hand side squaring it for Jones. It's a bit under hits and maybe Jones doesn't quite do enough to stop the man who's nipping in to intercept. The ball's poked down the line. Young running at Toza. Toza does well to hold him up, I think. Uh, but Young is able to square it. And Kemp, just like the goal he scored in the first half, does really well. This time on the D, again faced by Cannon. Again, Cannon holds his ground. And Kemp looks like he's going to go onto his right foot again and rip it in. But this time, cuts it back onto his left. And then hits across the ball to slam it into that bottom right hand of his left foot through Cannon's legs. Foster was angry with himself and he, I think he felt he could have got to it. And certainly it seemed to go under his hand rather than right into the corner. But having said that, uh, you know, it was a great quick piece of thinking by Kemp to cut inside and then cut across. Foster was just starting to move across to cover a shot into the other corner. It's, it's, it's a great piece of forward play and kind of inclined to focus on that more than Foster, if I'm honest. Wrexham starts to make changes. Young comes on for Cannon. And Young nearly scores when a corner where she rips into the near post nearly goes directly in. Maloney's scrambling around in his hands and knees, manages to get it out. Wrexham make a, another change eventually in the 83rd minute, but <laughs> it was remarkable because the three substitutes, Waters, O'Connor and Dolby, all came out for the triple sub, but the ball refused to go out. Obviously, Swindon's style of play plays a part in that. They just want to get the ball down and move around. But I timed it. Five minutes, 33 seconds, the ball didn't go out of play. So those three were standing there for ages before finally they were introduced in the 83rd minute. The two strikers coming off and boil as Wrexham switched to that 4-4-2 with the diamond, which we enjoy using when we're trying to chase a game. I say maybe enjoy is the wrong word. You don't want to be in that situation. But still, Swindon were killing the game off skillfully. And in the 89th minute, when Ford came on for Barnett, there looked to be very little hope. The ref adds on five minutes, which seems like an underestimate. But Wrexham gets straight into it. Second minute of added time. Toza gets a throw. Hurls it into the box. It's half cleared. Mendy hits a shot into the ground. It loops on target. And James Jones has been left unmarked six yards out. What a lovely, smart piece of thinking by Jones, who, back to goal, just helps it on with his head over the stranded keeper. And it's 4-5. Wrexham keep pushing and keep pushing. And then in the sixth minute of added time, a surge through the middle ends in a free kick right on the, on the end of the box. Wrexham shouting for a handball and a penalty against Gordon Malife. The ref judges it to be you know, fractions outside the box. Young steps up to hit it, drills it towards the bottom right corner. Maloney pulls out a phenomenal save. Look at it again. And you'll see just what a good save it is. Young drills it superbly. He doesn't put it through or under the wall. He puts it round the, the runner at the end of the wall. And there's a great angle on the, in the highlights from behind the goal, the opposite goal, which shows that Maloney just didn't seem to be able to see anything until the last moment, yet somehow gets down and gets a really firm hand on it. A wonderful stop. Maybe too firm a hand, mind, because it ricochets onto Dolby, who has no time to react. And luckily for Wrexham, bounces straight back into the goal mouth and Elliot Lee is sharp enough in the crowd to get there first and turn the ball into the net. And Wrexham have drawn. Wrexham have somehow drawn 
a crazy game. Before the match, Swindon had had the second most shots in the division so far this season, and we'd had the third. I haven't checked, but I reckon we might just have overtaken them. So, like the Melton Gaines game, again, we've had lots and lots of shots. The other side have had hardly any shots, and they've been more ruthless than we are. Maybe a way in which we are missing Mullen. But anyway, it was an incredible game. And sometimes there are systemic issues that sort of play more importantly than individual performances. Before it's worth performances, well, Foster will be disappointed, obviously. Well, firstly, he's letting five goals in two games. So he's not going to enjoy that, is he? Uh, that goal that went under his hand, I think, the one that will frustrate him most from his point of view. The three centre-backs, well, <laughs> O'Connell, uh, I thought, generally did well. It was a bit at fault, maybe, for the Austin goal. He looked to really carry the ball forwards while well and was a very constructive player trying to break into the... Uh, to, to take the game to Swindon. Toza... Again, mixed bag. Maybe if he made a different decision, the first goal wouldn't have happened. But then, you know, that's life. The ricochet off him looked poor in a way because he's made the challenge. But I think, to be fair, it's what's going on behind him that's caused the problem. And the other centre-back, Boyle, again, just a couple of times, stepping out and not being able to recover if he didn't get there. Uh, didn't have the best of games this time, although he continued to be a big threat going forwards. He was the player sacrificed for Wrexham to go to four at the back. The wing-backs, Barnett, quite quiet. Had a little burst that I mentioned in the start of the first half where he got a couple of good crosses in. But overall, he didn't really manage to get into the game as he'd like to. Uh, Mendy, going forwards, did very well. It was causing issues, was coming inside sometimes as well. Um, defensively, though, he was having problems against Hutton, the right wing-back, uh, who was able to get quite a few crosses in. In the centre of midfield... I really like Andy Cannon. I think he's a very good player, but I'd personally rather have him on one of the, the right or left sides of a midfield three rather than in the middle because I just want a little bit more physicality in there. He makes good challenges and interceptions, but players like O'Connor and Young are stronger. Um, and, and for me, I think I'd rather see Cannon a bit further at the pitch. In the first half, he wasn't able to influence things much and Rex looked vulnerable in front of the back three. In the second half, uh, when he was driving forwards, you could see his qualities. Uh, so, yeah, I personally, I'd probably redeploy him, I think. Either side of him, well, uh, James Jones, we made man of the match. Tyler's running, real typical effort. He got the two goals as well, and lovely goals they were too. The first one's a beauty, the second one's just nice and genius thinking. And, yeah, he... Kept going till the end, kept working and working, as he always does, but fair play to him. He put in an excellent shift. On the other side, Elliot Lee as well gets two goals, also an assist, and clearly had a good game, was threatening. And we've sometimes seen him take a game by the throat a little bit more, but yeah, again, I mean, Lee's in fine form. Three goals, games in a row he scored now. Up front, yeah, credit to Bickerstaff again. Terrific energy, terrific enthusiasm. That goal he scored feels p typical of him. It's like it's just his desire as well as anything, as his ability. You know, he nutmegs one man cleanly, but then he seems the ball seems to roll down too far for him. But he'll still fight and come through and get the shot in. And he should be applauded. He holds the ball up so well, doesn't he? So yeah, Bickerstaff again, I think, has taken another stride forwards. Palmer, not as influential as on Tuesday, but had a good scrap with the centre backs, won plenty of headers as well. If he'd just been able to get his foot to that tap in first, Wrexham would have been absolutely laughing. So, frustration for Wrexham or delight for Wrexham? I don't know. It's so hard to judge. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, it's a point. And we're, what, two points off the playoffs? There's only four games in. Um, so, yeah, I, I can't explain the craziness properly, but it is happening. And <laughs> okay, what a hell of a ride we're on. Next game up at Barrow, of course. Join us for commentary of that as on Wrexham player. Uh, with the final score of Wrexham 5, Swindon 5. I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC.